Welcome to the Promoting Educational Partnerships for Learning series. These segments have been created by the Regional Professional Development Schools Program in the Seidel School of Education and Professional Studies at Salisbury University in Salisbury, Maryland. The following segment on co-teaching with college student interns will highlight the many benefits and long-term rewards that a collaborative internship experience can bring to everyone involved. This segment depicts real classroom examples that feature co-planning and co-teaching. When it comes down to it, we all know that as teachers and mentors, our goal is to help students become successful learners. Co-teaching in a collaborative internship is a value-added approach to successful teaching and learning. seats and we say, okay, what did you experience? Um, Are we going to let them talk at all? Just be like, go over there and don't say that word. Yeah, they don't, they don't get to participate, they don't get to do anything. Okay. What, are we actually, gonna, what are we going to do while they're over there? Are we going to do an activity or something? We can so actually, gonna... we'll go ahead and hand out. Co-teaching doesn't just happen. It starts with deliberate, thoughtful planning. In this scenario, the mentor, her intern, and a methods candidate make use of their planning period to brainstorm and develop the day's lesson with each person contributing ideas and suggesting refinements. Genuine collaboration at the planning stage ensures ownership of the lesson by all parties and supports ambitious, creative, and well-organized instruction. We are going to be starting our Native American lesson today. If you look at our objective on the board, talking by viewing the slideshow and looking at some primary sources today. As you can tell, there are some people that are not going to be joining us in this lesson. So if you guys want to move wherever you want to move, yeah, you do that right now. Yeah, you can you can sure. take stuff. Sure. Go for their stuff, guys. In the class, they don't get to participate at all. They don't get to talk. They're probably going to moan a little bit, and we'll just ignore Just completely ignore them. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can say, we go over the objective. We say, okay, look, we're going to be talking about the Indian removal act today, Trail of Tears, more about sectionalism, go over some of the vocabulary, okay. let it go on for a couple minutes and then start handing out this um, paperwork and we'll put it on the overhead and we'll title it Native Americans. And then we'll tell them, okay, now everyone go back to your seats. And we'll, let, we'll give them about a minute to talk mm -hmm. and say, hey, you know, how did, how did this make you feel? Right. Um, Just a minute. What was it like standing there in an, oh, let's do 30 seconds. Okay. Uh -huh. What I want you to do is just take the next 30 seconds and kind of think about, you know, maybe reflect on what just happened. Was I in the reservation? Because that's what we did. We essentially put a piece of tape there and said, <clears throat> we said, hey, you're in a reservation. You're in a really small piece of land. It's kind of uncomfortable because you're close together, okay? Or, you know, you got a lollipop. You got treated nicely. You got to sit where you want. You got to talk to your friends. You got to root through other people's stuff. You got to invade their privacy. Just take 30 seconds, just kind of think about it, all right? Just kind of think. If you want to write something down, go ahead. First, I want to start by saying this is a really great classroom in that not only do we have an SU intern working with a mentor teacher, but we're fortunate enough to be here on a day when we have an SU methods candidate also interacting in the same classroom. Uh, what benefits do you see in working collaboratively where you both or all of you stay engaged in the instructional process? I think it helps students, one, because there's, there's only one of me, and with the three of us in here a couple days a week, it is amazing how much more gets done, how much more the students retain, because I can go and work with one of my kids, and, and Mr. McGuire is still teaching, Brendan's helping out, like everyone's hands on. There's really no downtime, um, and we all really kind of just mesh really well together, and that is something with our personalities, too. We all fit in very well. It's, um, it's also, I think, it asks for a lot um, for the kids to think critically a lot more because, you know, all of us are able to ask some questions and kind of keep them engaged at all times. Okay. Somebody else, tell me what you said. That was maybe something a little bit different from Abby. Zach. I compared it to, like, what we just did in class. Like okay. Girls if anybody ever has a brief moment in, in the lesson of pause or something like that, the other, the other teacher just stepped right in and, you know, throws 
something at them. And another thing, when I taught my lesson last week for the methods class, and the, if there are discipline, discipline problems, I jumped in. It's you kind of make eye contact with with the other teacher, and they're like, I got this one. And right. then they go and talk to the student. Well, you can keep. Right. On so instruction is it's, it's smooth. Yeah. The next question: um, By being collaborative, do you have a greater opportunity to incorporate either technology into lessons or even do more ambitious lessons? Absolutely. The other day we had the slide projector, we had the overhead, and we had the um, LCD projector all going on pretty much at once. So it does open up that arena so you're not stuck in one little thing. Scott's operating something, I'm doing something, Brendan's, I mean, it's just, it flows so much better. Like this lesson in particular, I probably would be a little, I would be hesitant if it were just me in the class, right? But now that, that we have two other people, two other hands, it's easier. Now, this question goes to you as the mentor teacher. Do you feel that um, Scott's going to be prepared to take over his own classroom? Without a doubt. Absolutely no questions. And, and I mean, even though he's being prepared collaboratively, mm -hmm. I think because he is planning himself, like I know the lessons, so I can, it's easy to do the, co the collaborative thing because I've already taught them. Mm -hmm. But with him, he'll, he'll look at the stuff, he comes up with his own, own, excuse me, own objectives, own activities, and I just kind of go along with the flow. So he's doing all of that himself. Mm -hmm. But yet you're still in. probably interjecting mm -hmm. and saying, you know, and it's that idea that two of you are really putting down on paper what is. And it's the nice thing of teaching four classes. We get to see what works and what doesn't work. And Scott and Brendan both have been amazing at the fact that things do change. Kids are different, and you need to modify things, and they've done really well with that. How about you? Do you feel like you're going to be prepared? To uh, teach? Without a doubt, because you know it really helps if you have, because we have two experiences, you know, I, I went from one experience and now I'm in this experience and I saw, you know, maybe some things that I would do in the first and maybe, you know, wouldn't do and then things that I would do here and maybe wouldn't do. And especially, you know, being in high school or middle school, I see what works in high school and, you know, what works in high school doesn't necessarily work in middle school. Mm -hmm. So, vice versa, I'm sure. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Now, in watching this, you're going to be in Scott's shoes. Will you be able to apply some things here, though, and take them with you to the high school, you think, uh, even though it's a different world? Definitely. Um, and, you know, Leah and Scott have definitely helped prepare me to move on to the high school and I think make that step. Um, and just being so involved in the class, I know that there's other observers in my program that are just observers. And it's been great that Leah and Scott are so, you know, they're so open to me helping out. Um, so it's, it's definitely been... You helpful. haven't sat down the single day. <laughs> yeah. And, but from yeah. day one, I incorporated him as a teacher in this classroom. So, there's nothing worse than sitting in the back of the yeah. room and, you know. Watching the same lesson four times. Right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. You've just seen a brief glimpse of what it looks like to co-teach with a student intern or candidate in your classroom. When the mentor teacher and the student intern remain engaged in instruction, there's no limit to learning, and the process doesn't have to be intimidating or complex. Did you notice in the video that co-teaching can be as simple as grazing and sharing the stage during lesson delivery? As you become more comfortable with the concept of co-teaching, you may desire to tackle more ambitious lessons or try activities with many moving parts. The sky is the limit when it comes to co-teaching possibilities. Take any good teaching strategy you already employ in your classroom, add an additional human resource, and the end result is sure to be effective. The main point to remember when you host a Salisbury University student intern is that the real focus is on improved learning for all. We want to help you and your school make a difference in learning for your students while at the same time help us to prepare the next generation of outstanding teachers. It's a win-win for everyone involved. <laughs>